Today we're going to be studying about faith, and we'll be using our faith storyboard as an outline of the topics that we'll cover today. Faith will be of utmost importance to us during the upcoming 1335 days of the Great Tribulation. And I'll be covering the Great Tribulation and its 1335 days in subsequent uh, storyboards. But today we're going to focus in on faith because that's a very important element of us uh, during this Great Tribulation. We are saved by grace through faith. That's what the Bible teaches us. God extends his grace to cover our sins. Our part is to accept this free gift from God through faith. God says that without faith, it is impossible to come to God and to please him. Breaking God's law, his commandments, results in our death. That's the penalty for sinning. But Jesus voluntarily came to earth and died for our sins, thus paying the death penalty that our sins required. So God the Father agreed that Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient payment for all who would accept him, uh, th this sacrifice by faith. And we will be covering that in more detail in subsequent storyboards. But let's start with number one here on our storyboard. Did God did not create robots that would follow his commands without thinking. God created us on purpose with a free will so that we would love him willingly. God wants loyalty out of us but only if it's freely given. Knowing that man would sin because God knows the future, and he can look down into the future through the annals of ages, and God saw that man and the angels would sin, and he planned a, a way of redemption for mankind. And we'll be talking about that here also in the subsequent storyboards. So God the Father with his plan to save us. He wrote it, this plan of salvation, in the book of life and sealed it with seven seals before he created anything. So this is the, the sin problem that entered into the world that did not catch God by surprise. He knew all about it and he has a plan to save mankind and he wrote it in the Book of Life, and then sealed it with seven seals. And we'll be covering this topic in more detail uh, in the future. So let me share with you a, a Bible scripture that goes along with this idea of a free will. We find this in Psalms uh, 54, verse 6. It says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. So David, is, when he wrote this uh, psalm, he said he would freely sacrifice unto thee. This is what God wants. He wants a free, he created us with a free will, and he wants us to sacrifice and honor him and follow his, his guidings freely out of love for him. Well, you may ask, how did sin actually occur? How did it occur in heaven? Because God created the angels first. So let's take a look at number two on our storyboard. Number two says, Lucifer did not have faith in God. Well, Lucifer is also a created being just like we are. He was created perfect in all his ways until envy and jealousy began to grow in him. 
in heaven above, Jesus was seated on the right-hand side of, of God, and Lucifer was seated on the left-hand side. Jesus on the right hand, Lucifer on the left hand side of God's throne. And you know, they both seemingly had the same stature, but there was a difference between Lucifer and Jesus. Jesus was God. He was not created. He was all eternal. And Lucifer was created. It's interesting now, this is what I have gleaned from reading the Bible, is that the angels in heaven have never seen Jesus create anything up to this point. But he, the Bible clearly says that he is the creator of everything. All the stars in the sky, the earth, the moon, everything on earth, including mankind. Jesus was the creative arm of the, the uh, Trinity. So one day, as things developed in heaven, with Lucifer rebelling, God the Father commanded that the angels in heaven were to worship Jesus as God and creator of, ev of everything. But Lucifer felt this was a slight to him. Why did he think it was a slight to him? Because Jesus was on one side of God the Father and Lucifer was on the other. He thought somehow he was equal with Jesus. So what did Lucifer do then? He began a whisper campaign uh, insinuating that God was not to be trusted because he didn't have their best interests in mind. So somehow he spoke with the other angels and he started this whisper campaign. So gradually over time, he was able to start a rebellion in heaven where one-third of the angels rebelled against God. Now, the Bible doesn't say how long this took. Uh, everybody can have their own opinion, I, uh, but I think it took quite a long time. I think God reasoned with Lucifer and the other angels and tried to convince them to abandon their uh, renegade beliefs. And this possibly could have actually taken thousands of years. Some have even suggested that it uh, took maybe 6,000 years. We don't know. But I think God reasoned with Lucifer over the years, trying to convince him that his position was wrong. Now let's take a look at some Bible uh, texts relating to Lucifer. The first one is from Ezekiel uh, 28, and we're going to be reading uh, from 12 through 19. Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre. Now the king of Tyre, that's an acronym or a reference to the devil or Lucifer. So son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God. You had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Then every precious stone was your covering. Now, I'm going to skip over all the various stones here. But every precious stone was his covering. And on the day that you were created, they were prepared. So these stones, these beautiful stones, were prepared for uh, Lucifer. You were the anointed cherub who covers, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. The mountain of God is where God uh, resides. So he, it says you were, uh, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, verse 15. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Now, I don't know how unrighteousness grew up in his heart, but it, somehow it did. By the abundance of your trade, you were in, internally filled with violence, and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as profane from the mountain of God. So God pushed him out, cast him out of the place that he resides. 
And I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you before kings that they may see you. So this is talking about future things that are actually going to happen also. By the multitude of your iniquities, in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. Therefore I have brought fire from the midst of you. It has consumed you. So someday in the future, Lucifer will be consumed by fire. And I have turned you to ashes on the earth, in the eyes of all who see you. So Lucifer will be burned up, because ashes are a, a fire that has all burned up all the wood or uh, all the material, and Lucifer will be ashes on the earth. All who know you among the people are appalled at you. You have been ter terrified. They, you have become terrified, and you will cease to be forever. Did you catch that last verse there? And it, and it says, and you will cease to be forever. So even Lucifer, with all the sins that he has committed and all the sins that he has caused other people to commit, there will come a time when Lucifer will not be burning in hell, that he will have been burnt up, he will be ashes on the earth, and he will cease to be forever. Very interesting text, isn't it? Now, let's take a look at the last text here for today. This is in Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 17. Starting at 12, it says, How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn! You have been cut down to earth, you who have weakened the nations. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Could you imagine that? Lucifer wanted to be higher than God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. That's the recesses of the north. That's where God lives. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will make myself like the Most High. Who is the Most High? That's God the Father. Let's continue here in with number 15. Nevertheless, that means in spite of your boastings, you will be thrust down to Sheol. Sheol, that's Hades, or the grave, or death. That's what that means. So you'll be thr thrust down to death to the recesses of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you, and they will ponder over you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness, and overthrew its cities, who did not allow his prisoners to go home? So there's not a lot of information in the Bible about how Lucifer fell. And, uh, so, and all the details. But I think these two uh, references in Ezekiel and Isaiah give us a good idea on what the situation was like in heaven and what God the Father had to deal with. 